Greg here again with another radiation debunking video. This time we're going to be addressing the HBO miniseries, the docudrama Chernobyl, and the success with that has spurred a lot of uh, interest in radiation topics, and I guess I had to put in my two cents worth. Even though on this channel we usually talk about Fukushima and the fear mongers who promote it, trying to get for their fear porn that they produce for their channels to scam people out of money. Uh, but the, we've seen Hollywood do this over the years on so many different types of subject matter dealing with radiation, whether it be a nuclear power plant accident or a nuclear war scenario. The fear of ignorance sells. Yes, that's right. Most of you are very ignorant about radiation. If you only believe what you've seen on the movies or the media, you don't know a damn thing because all these movies and all these series basically keep you ignorant about radiation because they need to pump up the fear and count on that ignorance to sell tickets, to gain advertisers, or whatever. Take, for example, this scene from the recent miniseries Chernobyl, and you'll see what I mean. There is some good news. The airdrops are working to douse the fire. There's been a reduction in radionuclide emissions, but the fire will not be extinguished for at least another two weeks. There is also an additional problem. Nuclear fuel doesn't turn cold simply because it is not on fire. In fact, the temperature will likely rise as a result of the blanket of sand we dropped. The uranium will melt the sand, creating a kind of lava which will begin to melt down through the shield below. I believe there was time to reinforce this lower concrete pad before the lava reached the earth and contaminated the groundwater, but as it turned out, I was worried about the wrong thing. Uh, um, it was my understanding that these large water tanks under the reactor were essentially empty. Uh, this is Ulana Khomyuk of the Belarusian Institute. Thanks to her insight, we are now aware that the tanks are, in fact, full. Of water. Yeah. Why is that a problem, Professor? <clears throat> when the lava enters these tanks, it will instantly superheat and vaporize approximately 7,000 cubic meters of water, causing a significant thermal explosion. How significant? We estimate between two and four megatons. Everything within a 30 kilometer radius will be completely destroyed, including the three remaining reactors at Chernobyl. The entirety of the radioactive material in all of the cores will be ejected at force and dispersed by a massive shockwave, which will extend approximately 200 kilometers and likely be fatal to the entire population of Kiev, as well as a portion of Minsk. The release of radiation will be severe and will impact all of Soviet Ukraine, Latvia, Lithuania, Belarusia, as well as Poland, Czechoslovakia, Hungary, Romania, and most of East Germany. Are you stupid? For much of the area, a nearly permanent disruption of the food and water supply, a steep increase in the rates of cancer and birth defects. I don't know how many deaths there will be, but many. For Belarusia and the Ukraine, impact means completely uninhabitable for a minimum of 100 years. But we may have a solution. We can pump the water from the tanks. Unfortunately, the tanks are sealed shut by a sluice gate and the gate can only be opened manually from within the duct system itself. So we need to find three plant workers who know the facility well enough to enter the basement here, find their way through all these ductways, get to the sluice gate valve here, and give us the access we need to pump out the tanks. Of course, we will need your permission. My permission for what? Uh, the water in these ducts. The level of radioactive contamination. They'll likely be dead in a week. Nope. We're asking for your permission to kill three men. Three situation workers volunteered to go ma manually operate the valves necessary to drain the pool and later images of the corium mass of the pipes of the bubbler pool's basement reinforced the prudence of their actions. 
Despite the risk of their mission, all three workers lived at least 19 years past the incident. One died in 2005 of heart failure, and the other two remained alive in 2015. So, of course, no, the, the Chernobyl wasn't asked to send three people to their deaths. Now, I'll let Thunderfoot give a debunking of that particular scene, because he does a lot better job than I do dealing with radiation uh, technical topics. But yeah, this is a very good video. And we've seen this over and over again with people trying to compare Fukushima with Chernobyl. And it just doesn't work. Chernobyl had so many inaccuracies. However, it was an interesting watch. I watched some of it, and I got kind of tired of it because it was had a lot of inaccuracies. And I was trying to I kind of get little teed off when Hollywood does that. And I'll probably eventually watch the whole series. But we did see a lot of inaccuracies with Chernobyl, uh, just as we see more of it with uh, Fukushima. Now, for the last eight years, we have seen a whole lot of trolling and a whole lot of channels promoting the idea that Fukushima is a lot worse than Chernobyl. We see it even from so-called professionals like this. It seems that nearly a million people have already died as a result of Chernobyl, despite what WHO says and the IAEA. This is one of the most monstrous covers up, cover-ups in the history of medicine, because everybody should know about this. Then we extrapolate through to Japan. Um, Japan is, by orders of magnitude, many times worse than Chernobyl. Japan is, by orders of magnitude, many times worse than Chernobyl. So even these professionals anti-nuke professionals that maybe are on the lecture circuit selling books, uh, are trying to convince you that nuclear is this evil, dangerous thing. Multitized times, multitude times worse than Chernobyl. Well, no, it's not the case at all. Chernobyl was much worse in a lot of different aspects. The only way Fukushima was worse is the radiation that was released into the sea instead of the air, because Chernobyl was not on a sea. That's really the only way that Fukushima could have been classified as being worse than Chernobyl. So we've seen this over and over again. I'm going to now dis dispel some myths about how that, that Fukushima was multi -time, multiple times worse than Chernobyl. Very easily, even without going into the figures, the easiest way to debunk this is, is the simple fact that, well, not only have nobody, has nobody died from Fukushima radiation, there aren't any increases in cancer from Fukushima radiation. We don't see any dying or dead oceans due to Fukushima radiation. We don't see high radiation levels anywhere on Earth except inside of Three containment buildings in Japan. You see, that's the key to it right there. Containment buildings. All you ignorant people need to learn a little bit, just a tiny little bit of what a containment building is, because you come to me saying, well, there were three meltdowns in Fukushima, so it must be at least three times worse than Chernobyl. Well, no. Chernobyl had a massive open-air graphite fire. The top of the building was completely blown away, and there was actually complete exposure to the atmosphere this massive release of radiation from Chernobyl. Now, with Fukushima, and I'm going to show you some pictures of buildings here um, and some diagrams, uh, this diagram here shows uh, what, what's called the Mark I uh, system of reactors that was used at Fukushima. And the yellow portion is the primary containment and the green outer or secondary containment. This is housed inside of these, these square buildings you see, these cubicle buildings you see in these aerial photographs. And after the meltdowns, after all everything was said and done, yeah, there was a lot of damage to several of those buildings at Fukushima. Looks like they were blown sky high like Chernobyl, right? Well, no, that's where you're wrong. You see, going back to this diagram of the containment structure, see that, that yellow part there? That's the key to it. It's called containment. And the meltdowns occurred within that yellow, the yellow containment structure, the primary, primary containment. And it, what happens is it contains the radiation. The meltdown occurs, it drips through down all the way to the floor, and basically stagnates there where it's prevented from going down any deeper. And all the radiation in a high, really high gamma radiation is, you, you can't enter that, that part of the building. The inside of that yellow part, nobody's been able to go inside there because it's extremely high radiation inside that containment building. But out right, out right outside that containment building, we have a thousand workers working there every day, have been working there for the last eight years on the cleanup effort, 
and they can stand right outside there and not get extremely high levels of radiation and nobody gets cancer, nobody dies from Fukushima radiation. Truth is stranger than fiction. Now, Chernobyl had no containment building. It was built in a damn tool shed. The top blew and had an um, open-air graphite fire. Yeah, there were some radiation releases from Fukushima. Nowhere near the amount of radiation releases at Chernobyl. That's right. Uh, you, you need to get some little basic knowledge of it. That's the easiest way to debunk this. Containment building versus not containment building. In fact, at Chernobyl, they had to build a containment building around it. They sometimes refer to it as sarcophagus. They had to build a containment building around Chernobyl because it didn't have one. And this is what was necessary to try to keep the spread of radiation into the environment at a minimum by building a containment building around Chernobyl, which should have been built in the first place. But Japan has three containment buildings, and firstly, every other reactor design in the world has what they call a containment structure, which contains the radiation. You see, gamma radiation is blocked by mass. These are massively thick walls in this primary containment building. And as long as the containment building isn't blown to smithereens, then, then you don't have a problem. All the damage you've seen at Fukushima to those buildings was the outside or the secondary containment building, which really didn't have much to do with blocking radiation. It was more of keeping a negative pressure inside the structure in case there was a problem and when, re and when changing fueling, uh, fuel rods. That was what the outside containment structure was in the case of the Mark I at Fukushima. And the fuel pools can be seen. This is another meme. Your fuel pools can be seen just to the right of that yellow structure, uh, at near the top of the yellow structure, and then the platform above where people can walk, and you've seen a lot of pictures there. That whole upper structure above the fuel pools was blown on several reactors. And it looks like it was blown to smithereens. No, it's just the outside containment. The inner containment, which is, which is made to withstand much greater uh, damage uh, potential and impacts, even from a, a fully loaded jet airliner after 9-11, there were some measures taken to make sure that uh, no kamikaze-style airplane crash could basically ruin our, our nuclear um, power plants. Uh, the, the, the primary containment building uh, doesn't really do much in the way of, of containing the radiation. Let's do a quick comparison between the severity of the differences between Fukushima and Chernobyl. The next several charts will show Fukushima on the left and Chernobyl on the right. If you don't get a chance to read these links, uh, you can pause it or you, there, it will all be linked in the description box below. And as you can see, the type of reactor at Fukushima was a Mark I containment vessel, whereas the RBMK was without containment. Now you can see the amount of uh, nuclear fuel in the affected reactors was greater than in Chernobyl, but hardly any of that radioactivity from that fuel, and most of the fuel was, has already been salvaged, is much lower than what was released at Chernobyl. As you'll see, the maximum level of radiation detected was lower at Fukushima, and you'll notice inside the Fukushima it says, inside Unit 2 containment vessel. Inside the vessel, that means that means inside the containment where it is high deadly levels of radiation. But outside, it's a whole lot lower. You can stand outside the primary containment building and not die. But if you go inside there, you're going to be have a lethal dose within minutes. As you can see, the amount of radiation released was a whole lot more at Chernobyl than in Fukushima. The area affected was much greater at Chernobyl than at Fukushima. As, as the same is for the exclusion zone, the area of the exclusion zone. Much more of the population was had to be relocated at Chernobyl than in Fukushima. And you can see direct fatalities from the accident. Fukushima, none. So all you people screaming that thousands have died from Fukushima radiation. I've challenged everyone in the world on this more than once, and nobody can show me a Fukushima radiation death. And yes, it will take decades for them to clean up Chernobyl, well, clean up to clean up both of them, actually, because they're still working on decommissioning the site at Chernobyl and will be for many decades with Fukushima as well. So that's why the whole meme about Fukushima being a thousand times worth Chernobyl is absolutely wrong because there is a containment structure. The anti-nuke establishment has done a massive job in the last 30, 40 years trying to demonize nuclear even though it's the safest form of energy we, uh, we actually have, it's actually less people die of nuclear energy than even solar, wind, hydro, and all the others. That's right, it's the safest form. 
But yet we have to demonize it and pretend that we need to get rid of it. What are we going to replace it with? Coal kills millions each year. But anyway, even these professionals are trying to make, give you the idea that somehow nuclear is bad, that we need to get rid of nuclear. Well, nuclear can be dangerous. Uh, case in point of what Hollywood does is this next scene from the movie The China Syndrome. When I saw it last night, I thought we'd better show it to you, Greg. What do you think? I may be wrong, but I would say you're probably lucky to be alive. For that matter, I think we might say the same for the rest of Southern California. As I remember the control room layout, the enunciators they seem concerned with are also in the area of the core water level. I don't know. They might have come close to exposing the core. If that's true, then we came very close to the China syndrome. The what? If the core is exposed, for whatever reason, the fuel heats beyond core heat tolerance in a matter of minutes. Nothing can stop it. And it melts right down through the bottom of the plant, theoretically, to China. But of course, as soon as it hits groundwater, it blasts into the atmosphere and sends out clouds of radioactivity. The number of people killed would depend on which way the wind is blowing. Render an area the size of Pennsylvania permanently uninhabitable, not to mention the cancer that would show up later. That's right. Movies have been doing this since at least the 70s. Try and get you to believe that nuclear is this evil demon and giving you misconceptions like that. Let's take that for example. It's interesting they use the phrase rendering an area the size of Pennsylvania permanently uninhabitable because actually uh, just 12 days later after the movie was released of the film The China Syndrome, Three Mile Island, plant number two, created a molten core that moved 15 millimeters towards, quote, China before the core froze at the bottom of the reactor vessel, thus that the Three Mile Island reactor, the fission products breached the fuel plates but melted itself and did not break the containment of the reactor vessel. Again, if you miss any of these screens, just pause the video or check the description box for links to these pages. And then we get nonsense like this. What? What is this? There's so much ignorance on the internet, it's incredible. So no, Chernobyl was a lot worse than Fukushima in so many different aspects. Uh, wrapping up here, uh, if you don't know about my, uh, my secondary channel dealing strictly with debunking Fukushima, liars and myths about Fukushima, check out this link here for, this, for that channel. And also check out Thunderfoot's video here, the one I mentioned earlier, that he does a lot of great debunking of the whole... HBO series and the technically speaking aspect of it. Thanks for watching.